<laughs> Look at these pants! So, these are not the craziest trousers you've ever seen. These are pajamas, okay? So you can blame my wife for these. I just thought I'd, I needed to get this off the bucket list. We've, we've, I think we've done nearly 500 videos here on YouTube over the last six years, five, six, seven years, or however long it's been. I've never done it in the PJs, so I'm rocking them. Anyway, in this video, guys, um, I'm gonna go over how to get into creating epic gospel style bass fills. We've got a day off here in New York today. If you're wondering why we're in New York, we're recording a ton of courses for the Scots Bass Lessons dot com membership with guys like Steve Jenkins, Rich Brown, Damien Erskine, Cody Wright, um, all of those cool cats. Um, but we've got a day off today, so we're gonna go into, uh, I'm gonna take the boys into town and, uh, and do the whole touristy thing. So hopefully at the end of this video, you might be able to catch some of that. But I wanted to put this video to get together for you guys because I've just been listening to a ton of gospel over the last day or so and and I just inspired me to want to you know create this lesson for you. Now I get asked and emailed a ton about the kind of how I would I would categorize them as synth style gospely type of bass fills. You know that type of thing. I get asked a lot about that. And really, it's stolen directly from the gospel guys. Um, I'd say, for me, you know, guys like Sheree Reed. Guys like uh, Justin Rains, who's a phenomenal bass player. Fred Hammond, you know, all of those gospel guys, right? It's really inspired by them. And what I, I noticed when I was watching them play is that they use a lot of pentatonics and that's because the pentatonics have a quite an open sound so they're not suggesting. They give you enough stuff to play around with to, to be able to create cool, cool bass fills but the, they exclude the seventh a lot of the time um, and that really helps for me to get that gospel vibe like don't get me wrong i use the seventh a ton gospel players use that seventh a ton but with with the fills that, that those guys do there is like a real pentatonic flavor to them so the first thing to do to get into this thing is know your pentatonics so i'm going to in this lesson just run over the two basic pentatonic shapes right and then you can expand it on there and then i'm going to show you another really cool exercise that you need to get down right because it's this specific hammer on and pull off exercise that gives me the ability to do to do that type of thing right without this specific exercise i wouldn't be able to do that so let me just run over the first the, the first two basic pentatonic shapes that you're going to need to know right so the first one is the major pentatonic shape so this would go over a major chord right so here We've got the major sound, and the pentatonic that fits over that is C major pentatonic, right? So C major, just think of it as a major scale, but you're missing out the fourth and the seventh. So you're playing one, two, three, five, six, and then root, okay? One, two, three, five, six and then root pentatonic penta five okay so it's a five note scale one two three four five one two three four five oh, one two three four five and then the root right so that's 
actually first pentatonic, and I'd, I'd try messing around with that shape to start with. Now the next shape that I'd like you to learn is the minor pentatonic. So let's look at this over C minor. And don't get me wrong, there is, you can also please C there and C there. And just as you can play a major scale in many different fingerings, you can play a major pentatonic in different fingerings, right? But I've just given you one to get you started and then I want you to look into what you, you're gonna use for the rest of them. It's easy to figure out, okay? So the minor pentatonic, C minor, so let's just on the C minor, right? Is, this is the shape. And then it starts again. Okay, so it's root, minor third, four, five, flat seven. And then it starts again. But just to start with, just, you know, get this, this shape down here. Okay, that's over the C minor. So we've got C major. C minor. Okay, that's all within that shape. So they're the first two pentatonic type shapes that I learned that, that's gonna, and it's really gonna help you get into this style of, um, a fill creation because if, if you're on a minor groove you can use that C minor for any fills you can use that and then similarly if it's a major style group you can use the major pentatonic for you know any major style groove so uh, any major style feel so So you get it, right? So over a major, you can use a major pentatonic. Over a minor, you can use a minor pentatonic. And you can think about, uh, I could mention that you can use an E flat minor pentatonic over a major because it's the relative, yeah. We'll cover that in another, in another video. Okay, so this exercise that I want you to guys to get down, that's going to give you the ability to rinse out the, that thing, right? The exercise that helped me get this together was super simple. I'm gonna show you on a C minor style pentatonic sound, right? And it's all to do with hammer-ons, pull-offs, and shifting, okay? So the first hammer-on is the B flat to the C. So seventh to the root. So what I'm gonna do is I'll play the exercise first and then I'll break down exactly what I'm doing, okay? So here we go. So what's going on there? Well, essentially I'm just ascending with hammer-ons and one slide, and then I'm descending with pull-offs and one slide. But what it's given me the ability to do is practice it in a really concentrated way, okay, over one particular scale type. So the scale is the C minor, um, the C minor pentatonic, but we're playing it from the seventh, okay? So the seventh to the root, to the minor third, to the fourth, slide okay so seven root 
minor third, fourth, slide with the same finger. The fingering's got to be bang on with this, guys. Seven, root, minor third, four. Okay? Okay, so that's it ascending. Now, I want you to descend it the same way. Slide. Okay, so now let's look at doing the hammer-ons and pull-offs because that's the key thing to doing the, that thing, right? So let's take that pattern. For the first note, I want you to pluck the first, the first note and then hammer on the, ne the next note. Did you see what happened there? So I'm plucking it and then hammering on. Then the same for the next string. Now, with these notes, sometimes I play it um, one to three. Fingers one, three. Sometimes I play it one, four. Depends what mood I'm in. Okay, so, hammer on, then pluck, hammer, pluck, hammer, slide. Got to get the slide in there, that cannot be plucked. Slide, pluck, hammer, pluck, hammer. Okay, so that's it ascending. It cannot be like this. It can't be like that. It really needs to be super equal. Make sure you concentrate on that bit. I've worked with so many students, I'll say that, it's gotta be equal. Boo da boo, so I'll go, yes Scott, yes Scott, and then. They'll do that, right? So make sure you really be, concentrate on that one point, make it equal. Now descending is where we're going to pull off. Pluck, pull, pluck, pull, pluck, pull, slide, pluck, pull. Now pull off, it's not a lift off, I'm not doing this. I'm pulling down. I'm pulling down. Okay? Same thing, do not skip it. Okay, it's not, it's not swing. It needs to be super even. So now let's put the two together and it'll sound like this. Now, once you've got that, and once you can play up to that speed, now you've got the ability to do those little stings, right? And give it that, go give it that kind of Stevie synth vibe, right? That thing. And all I'm doing there is a little trill. I'm not going, <laughs> you know, it's not free for all. I'm just, it's just a, I could do it. I could do that if I wanted to. Okay. Yeah. But it sounds better if it's. It sounds more, you know, gospelly, more like a synthy, grindy, whatever it is. Okay, so don't think I'm going like this. Some people do, you know. They do do that sometimes, but in this instance, you know, it's it's okay just to. And, 
and what I'm, not, I'm not teaching that specific thing, I'm just making sure that's where you know that comes from. I'll teach you all about that in another, in another lesson. So just to recap, you've got two main pentatonic shapes I want you to look at, the major and the minor. C major. Okay. C minor. Okay, and then I want you to practice that hammer-on pull-off exercise. And then add in the glisses. Instant vibe, right? <laughs> um, so hopefully you've enjoyed this lesson, guys. Thanks so much for following um, what we're doing over here in New York. It's super exciting uh, for us to be out, the SPL team to be out here working with some of the best bass players on the planet to uh, create content for all the academy members within scottsbasslessons.com. So we're absolutely stoked that everybody's following along uh, with this in this experience with us because we've been sharing it all in the past few YouTube videos. Um, we've got, I think it's Rich Brown up next. If you've not heard of Rich Brown, guys, I'm gonna put clips of him in the next video. Words can't describe this guy. He's like the coolest guy you'll ever meet. He's a monstrous bass player, seriously. But anyway, uh, other than that, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, that would make my day. Uh, leave a comment, and let me know what you wanna see on the channel and stuff like that. And uh, check out scottsbasslessons.com if you wanna uh, hook, hook yourself up with the, uh, the best online bass school in the world. So other than that guys, take it easy and I'll see you in the shed, bye. Hang on, let me get D Max sexy face. Yeah, Who's got the best sexy face? Me. Let's, D vote, let's, let's vote in the comments. Vote in the comments. Who's got the best sexy face? D Max, go. Gav, go. <laughs> <laughs>